It's the KSL semifinal, and it is in the top right, Dark versus Bottom Left Classic. A typical Korean showdown. We don't get to cast the Korea Open Cups, and we don't get to cast KSL Live, but we do get the replays. And so I believe the opponent waiting for either one of these guys is actually Clem in the finals. So this is going to be the Zerg or the Protoss making it through here. I wanted to check this out, not just because I need something to cast, but also because I don't really have an up-to-date uh, feel on how Classic is playing. Dark, I uh, feel pretty confident and you know, thinking of how he plays, and well, here we go. There's, you know, something weird is happening. And that's what he does. But then Classic can be a weird player, can be one of the best macro players, can be just a very solid Protoss who exemplifies everything a Protoss should do. Dark... Not exactly the same for uh, the Zerg player, I suppose. But this is, hmm. This is something. You know, I don't think Classic is very rigid. Yeah, and so there is a possibility that this is actually reacted to. You don't always get that timing. And I guess maybe it would have to be like, you gotta check this base as Classic did. Just a little over to the right and then suddenly you can see whether or not they're building there. And then you could respond to the forge. But, I mean, if you go directly to the main base and then you leave and go searching, then it it's, you can't really react to it. But even though this is, like, it, it looks like it okay timing, actually really nice positioning as well. Gotta give it the classic. One of the better professional players who can cannon rush, actually. Zest isn't very good at it wasn't. I know it's been a while. <laughs> I should stop referring to him. Um, Hero also has a couple of disastrous cannon rushes that have been seen on big stages. Classic is actually pretty reliable, and that was a really nice cannon placement. Able to block his probe in the second pylon that he canceled to save the money, and then still able to fit the cannon as the probe gets bopped out. Really nicely done. Um, using, obviously, the terrain of the base against your opponent so that Dark could not get a full surround or even a partial surround. That was going to be, like, two drones at best killing that cannon. So this is a successful cannon response. Can't really call it a cannon rush, but, you know, I guess it is. <laughs> it is going to move on, so it certainly isn't the type of cannon rush that's trying to just end the game. Where you go into a proxy robo, for instance. Maybe possible. Sure. In a really, really, really weird game. But honestly, it's just like there's so little reason to. I mean, Dark has already put so many eggs in this basket that just by getting the kill here with two cannons, you don't need to try and double down into some proxy immortal shenanigans that would not even be proxy to the main base so much. Unless you put it there and then hope they didn't find it and then and then they can't. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you could. But Classic does not. So Stargate it is. Very, very safe response here. A couple of things got I didn't even notice that. But Dark scouts nothing that is helpful. He scouts that his opponent has moved on and that a Stargate's on the way, which is just good news for Classic and bad news for Dark. Dark can't do anything now with his information. Classic doesn't have a full wall, but I could see why he doesn't think he needs it. Shield battery is done. More on the way. Oracle is actually going to pop out first here. That could be what he could afford immediately with the minerals that he had. But that does have the downside of being energy-based. And not a lot of energy when it actually pops up. Pops up. The depth almost dying. Shield battery overcharge had to be used. Sorry, with the forge that he obviously used to counter rush the hatchery. Actually using it to defend. Obviously, duh. I definitely would have remembered that if I was playing. Uh, but seriously, that one extra cannon going to be a bother. Now the, the Ravagers have multiple things to try and target. So pylons, occasionally, yes. Shield batteries, definitely take those out if they're overcharged. And then the cannon uh, is going to be just uh, helping out along the way. And the Oracle might not have had a lot of energy, but it lives. And it kills one Ravager and almost basically kills the second one. Also, just enough time has been bought that Classic was able to actually produce a Void Ray. He's probably gotten some probes at this point, obviously. He knew that he was being all in pretty quickly. And so, it seems like game over to me. <laughs> this seems like uh, Dark got got. Either Classic knows that Dark can do that. I don't think Dark does it every game. That Definitely not. I could actually say that pretty confidently. But Classic might know that Dark would be the type to do that. 
It still isn't something that I see super often, actually. I mean, Alcyone has been in the map pool for ages at this point. But whatever it is, Classic actually bothered to kind of push his probe to the right a little bit on the scouting path and in time to add a forge. This is a very uh, one-sided game, but it's nonetheless kind of interesting just because we don't see this exact dynamic. The hatchery at the gold from the Zerg is their natural is one thing, but then the forge actually being a good timing is another. Uh, Baneling bus is a... <laughs> It's, it's a thing. Yeah, sure. That happened. A classic was clearly ready for everything. Dark. He's the type who does this and then brushes it off immediately. So good on classic for the proper response. But it is a best of three and it's not over yet. Quickly into the second game. In the top left it is dark. Bottom right it is classic. Classic just getting that scout plus response as if it was super practiced. Which it might be a little practice, but to say that it's ever super practice has to be wrong because that just doesn't happen all that often. But a little practice? Sure. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Especially if you are playing on ladder a lot, which uh, no doubt at this point the Koreans do more than they used to. But you gotta go way back, I think, by the time you start talking about them not laddering as much. You gotta go back to basically the team houses 2015. So, I'm sure they, they handle a lot of stupid cheeses. Korean ladder, always known for being the most aggressive ladder. North America gets the reputation for being the cheesiest or the weirdest, but it's always kind of with this, like, undertone of, well, it, it, they're weird because they suck. <laughs> that's, that's actually what NA has had for the majority of its career. It's weird because they suck, and they suck together enough that it creates entertaining games. That's the negative side of looking at NA, but that was definitely people's opinion of it for a very long time. I was relegated to being, you know, Korea 0.5 and better than Korea, but then a lot of the Koreans actually did go to North America to play the minimum number of games required. Um, anyway, Korean ladder, it can be cheesy, it can be all any, it can be aggressive, but I think people give it a lot more credit for being kind of like more biting, more just like, well, this is, this is a good thing to do and so don't 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 talk back about the Koreans, I guess. Anyway, I don't know. It's kind of funny that the NA and Korean server both have had times where it was well known for being very aggressive, but then just kind of like the connotation type of aggressiveness uh, was different and definitely respected in wildly different ways as well. If someone said like I was a top 50 NA player who can cheese a professional top, you know, 10 player in the world out, they, and I'm North American, I feel like people would be like, meh. <laughs> but he did it to a Korean on the Korean server against a top 10 Korean player. Well, then obviously that has a little more impact. Anyway, it's talked a lot about how they're cheesy. The point is that Dark is actually one of the rare Korean Zerg players who will just do all of these weird things and then some. Ragnarok, now Shin, can obviously be aggressive, can also do some kind of funny builds. Solar, every once in a while, kind of like is coming out of his comfort zone, I suppose, and does something that's not just purely macro. But Dark is the guy who not only can do an all-in, even when all the other Zergs say it's not the best, but he'll also do all the weird stuff that people really consider not to be that great anymore, like any type of proxy hatchery, for instance, which that wasn't the gold base hatchery, but still. Uh, so he creates fun games. And sometimes uh, fun games that end disastrously for Dark because he's kind of the one that puts the onus on himself by doing something weird like last game, he loses. But <laughs> because he loses so often, which is a really weird backing a compliment, um, I feel like he really doesn't care. Just really, you know, that, that, just, that, that didn't even register in his brain that first game. It's like, okay, on to the next one, whatever, I don't care. Obviously, he also wins quite a bit and he wins more than he loses, but... You learn by losing, guys, and that's why it's okay. Okay? Everyone, anyone needs to hear that. We got ourselves a very normal game, so I can blabber on for whatever I want to talk about. Oracle coming out for Classic, three hatcheries for Dark, no shenanigans on Site Delta, which really is a rather shenaniganless map. I mean, there's not too many interesting things. Dark, nonetheless, actually being quite diligent on his scouting. This one Ling over here was scouting all the way to the bottom left for any type of proxy or hidden... Um, structures because Classic certainly has a couple of very famous games where he has uh, certainly hidden a dark shrine in the bottom left. He has hidden like five gateways in, in a map equivalent to this space here 
weirdly close to a person's base, yet just out of that scouting path. And then he's like resonating glaives all in from that. There's the, the classic is not actually the cheesiest player in the world, but a lot of his famous games are cheesy or weird. So you can you can kind of forget that he's just a really good macro player, I suppose too. If you if you don't see him for a while, I guess. But it's more like he can be the complete package. He can be cheesy. He can be aggressive. He can be very good defensively, macro, micro, whatever, whatever. He just doesn't get to show it all at once all the time. And that is kind of the Protoss dilemma right now as a race, as a whole, when it comes to that top 15 pro gamer situation we got going on, where they don't make it to the round of eight consistently, and they don't make it to the round of four at all sometimes. And it just feels like it's it's every Protoss's trouble putting the package together in every single game that they play. Two drones went down to some mild harassment. So actually, three adepts died, so... Not, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that's not how exactly Classic wanted that to go. The Adepts were defending, but then the Oracles were trying to get some damage while they returned, eventually returned home. It did, it did well, time it worked out on Dark Side. Let's put it that way. And the two Oracles going to try and swing on by again. Actually, Queens were slightly out of position. They were engaging the Oracles. Yet, it ended up being a Bates. Would look to be a free mineral line. Ended up losing one of the Oracles. And the second Oracle is basically dead as well. Really not an ideal situation for Classic. Who uh, is coming in with a Resident Glaive to attack off of three bases. But it is off of three bases. Not the most powerful. That said, Dark doesn't really have a lot of defenses. Uh, equal number of workers. However, Dark's army supply equal is worse without those banelings and those banelings are not ready to go as of yet the adepts actually shade into the natural though and really not in the best position those lings got a rather good surround here prior to plus one melee being done no banelings involved as of yet and at this point it's pretty clear you won't need banelings so don't waste your money on that go back into droning as well perhaps we got more adepts coming in here and it's always those like couple of adepts you haven't accounted for that seem to get the most damage done isn't it and it is these ones at the third base that actually get a decent amount of drones. But at the end of the day, 15 drone kills for a total of 17 adepts. Adepts are more expensive than drones. I don't know if I have to tell you this, guys. But that is not a fair trade. We do have an oracle also dying as part of the resources lost. But still, that that's... That's so much army that is now gone. I mean, the Lings aren't exactly guaranteed to live if they engage here, so we do have a trade of Lings as well to keep in mind. But the amount of gas that has been sunk into the Resonating Glaives plus all of the Adepts that just sacrificed themselves, that is troublesome. Now, this could be a win if Dark was the type of guy to just try and take his lumps and macro on, but he is absolutely not... He did not go back into droning at any point. Just pure Ling Bane Ling trying to attack into his third base, which I actually thought was way more vulnerable than it was. Some pretty sick force fields coming down here from Classic. He still has more as well, and they are doing the trick thus far. A little gateway on the back as well to complete this Sim City. And wow. Golly G Willikers. Seriously, this is actually really good defense. Uh, clearly a Protoss mind at play here, able to dissect the base like that and create some pretty amazing sim city that's why i'm not a really good protoss i don't really have a protoss brain i do not look at force fields the way that a protoss should like classic not only very good but also having been a part of those metas in the past where centuries were even more important i would say yeah uh just played that defense really well <laughs> that, that was actually really impressive uh you know, the Stalkers, they can they can body a couple of Banelings, so that's okay there. But then the worry is that once they spread, then the Lings get us around with that plus one melee done. I mean, that, that really could have gone much, much worse, at the very least. I'm sure Dark was hoping Banelings could actually touch the probes. Kill half of the mineral line or kill the shield battery and work his way from there. But that did not happen. And all that defense happened, by the way, with Classic was up almost 20 workers. Dark only now getting back to building some of those drones that he lost and then wasn't replacing as they were lost. There's a time where you can realize the adepts aren't really going to kill you. You, know, you got enough to defend. You go back into the droning, then you go back into the army. Trying to fit that in, basically. Dark didn't fit that in. He just went hardcore army. 
didn't quite work, but he also didn't really go back on a macro either. And this is sometimes why Dark can make the recovery that he is known for. This is actually all over the place. Soccer is on either side of a bunch of force fields without their blink, finally blinking backwards. But these lings, man, with plus one melee, they came in and got such individual fights. That actually ended up being really nice for Dark. So what I was trying to say was that because Dark doesn't, again, he's, his instinct is not to go, okay, I need 20 drones instantly, boom, let's let's play out the macro game, or let's try and recover. He's like, okay, no, I really can't. I'll make, I think he made like nine drones, which is a decent amount, but obviously he's still nowhere near where Classic is. And instead just made a bunch more army. So Classic thinks he might be able to steamroll his opponent regardless if we built army or economy. That wasn't actually true. I think if he had taken the fight a bit better, he might have been able to. But that was a really good fight for Dark because Classic was just all over the place. And Dark's counterattack might actually win the game at this point. I don't see any force field to save the day this time around. Shield Body Overcharge is pretty freaking good. And once again, a lot of these units from the Protoss can body the pain links. Not the probes, though. Not the probes. Um, no, those are the ones that can't. <laughs> <laughs> but then we had plus two melee that was actually going to start impacting some of those lings surrounding the stalkers, and that is it. But that that fight is actually so bad from Classic. I'm not even really blaming him, just because it did feel like he might have an overwhelming advantage, regardless of if Dark made army or not. He yeah, made those, like, nine drones to try and recover a little bit. Needed army more so. Has been building it up for a while, so even takes a slight army advantage, but it's still that quality issue with the Protoss. No plus one R uh, attack, actually, though, on the Stalker is, is a little a little different. Because that Twilight Council was emphasized for the Risen Enclave, the Forge came down later. So that, that didn't help, but I think it really comes down to some of this positioning. Like, these Stalkers, so they get perfectly surrounded. These Stalkers blink forward, but then now they're not... I mean, they, you know, the force fields are kind of keeping them from being surrounded, surrounded, but now they can't move away. They can't just, like, stutter step, which stalkers do before, you know, and then they wait for blink, and then they blink back. They stutter step first. They can't all combine together. They can't behind, be behind the sentries, so the force fields come down to shave off the lings. The lings end up not being actually blocked on the backside. They kind of filter on through against now overall units that don't actually deal with lings that well compared to Zealots or Splash, obviously, a couple of Archons. These, none of these units really want to be tackling mass Ling. So, you know, the Immortals are almost useless. Uh, almost. <laughs> and then all these Stalkers that have blinked forward, yeah, again, no Stutter Step, no being behind the Force Fields, cutting the army in half. I mean, Classic basically got into a surroundable area that Dark had set up a pre-surround, but then he made it even more of a surround by blinking aggressively like he did. By the time he blinks back to kind of push his army all together and try and protect each other, it's too late. I, I pretty much guarantee if he came through this choke, there's like no way that same fight happens. No way. Even if Dark had set up some type of surround, it's so much easier to cut off here and then here and then deal with whatever comes from behind there oh no problem ah all right then uh maybe a little bit of a throw there from classic it does tie up to series game number three who makes it to the finals to face clem the top left of ghost river it is dark and in the top right we do have classic who I've, I've officially said now has lobbed that game. Um, it's not the biggest throw I've ever seen, and it is absolutely one of the type of engagements that Dark is more likely to take advantage of than any of the Zerg. It, it is the pitfall of trying to kill Dark after he is aggressive. You know, he, he is someone who goes for these all-ins, many of which other Zerg players will say aren't that good. You know, Zerg as a whole... Not really getting the best all-ins compared to the other races. The Dark does them. Sometimes they work beautifully. Instant GG. Fantastic. And well, a lot of the time, I guess I could say that they don't work out that well. They kind of leave him a bit haphazard alongside his opponent. And then it's a question of who's able to, to figure their way out from, from that point. And Zurich has the flexibility of Larva, but then also the weakness of Larva, which is that if you do make drones as you're being attacked, you're kind of screwed. 
We're Protoss and Terran, producing both same time, a little more at the very least. Don't have quite that vulnerability. But then it also means that sometimes when you think you've defended very well, which Classic 100% did, he defended very well. The one problem he had was the lack of army after the Adepts sacrificed themselves. And his minimal number of units did the trick. It was pretty cool. But then he thinks he's so far ahead that he just immediately counterattacks without... Without the wariness, I think he would give another game. That game wasn't, I've already, uh, killed about 20 drones. I forced out all these lings. Oh my god, you're all linning me. Okay, here we go. All right, I defended perfectly. Great. If you're not in that zone of just being like, well, I defended and now I win. Like, I think you take that a lot more cautiously as classic. You're, you're like stepping forward with tiptoes. Using something to scout, like a hallucination to scout beforehand to make sure that you're not getting surrounded or, uh... <sighs> yeah, just keeping your army together in chokes, I guess. It's really the more cautious way that you could have played that. Anyhow. It, it seems to be what Dark is particularly good at. He's good at getting the right amount of units. He's good at playing on a low drone count, when a lot of other Zergs would feel very uncomfortable at that point. Um, and he's very good at zigging when people would expect them to zag. So, for the most part, Dark would be making more army as opposed to more drones in those types of games, I would say, as someone who watches a decent amount of Dark. But it's not always the case. And there certainly are games where Dark makes a comeback because Classic doesn't move out that last game at all. He's afraid of Dark being Dark. And then Dark actually built 20 drones. And was at, uh, at least even macro, I suppose. All right, what's going to happen on Ghost River? A map that is uh, also kind of short. I guess the site delta also short, but Ghost River shorter. Means that momentum can, can swap very hard, very fast. You see Protoss players try and maybe go for some Resident Glaives builds here. Could happen again. At the end of the day, you could say that was an effective Resident Glaives build. It certainly had Classic ahead. There was some other problems with it. Sacrificing your army and then the other guy making army is troublesome. Classic took care of it. Maybe he feels like confident again. He does Resident Glaives again. There's also Blink build with that Proxy Gateway here. Zerg tr struggled to actually get that kill, nip it in the bud. And uh, try and win with your micro. See that decent amount. But if the Protoss is not the one who's applying some serious pressure, then it you know might just be Dark who actually ends up doing it. And he will be attacking hard and fast on this map. Scouts that there's a third Nexus, double Oracle, instantly as well. So at the very least, it's not some type of uh, fitting into the Twilight Council before second Oracle. And probably, yeah, it's going to be accompanied by a Forge. And now Dark would love to know Archon, Charge, Stalkers. It'd be one of the scarier things to think of right now. That you don't know if they're coming over with a Warp Prism, two Archons, and a bunch of Zell that's about to warp in. Well, it be a little later than this, but still. Double Oracle's still alive, although barely. Dark has been trying to protect his mineral lines. Without Spores, you know, putting them down as late as possible. Actually, almost perfectly timed on the main and the third. The natural didn't have any and got rallied. Always uh, unfortunate timing. Roach 1 evolution should be coming down for dark. Actually, nothing super aggressive so far. We got a couple of gateways coming down for classic, but no proxy attempt. This was not, again, cutting the oracle for a time, getting the Twilight Council faster, neglecting the forge for a while longer. This isn't a going to be a hyper attack for Blink Stalkers. It might go out and poke and clean up some creep. You know, with the help of the revelation, but... And the oracles have been... <clears throat> okay, recalled back. So they, that could be very much what it is. Stasis trap to help protect the Stalkers if they ever retreat, and that's how you apply some pressure as Protoss. Depth's also coming along, maybe coming from a different angle. Kind of classic. Classic setup. Classic for classic setup. Temple Archive's coming down fairly quickly. Gases are going to be taken at the 6th base, or 3rd base then. 5th and 6th gases is what I was thinking of. And, uh, and some scouting. You know, Dark might not have been hyper-aggressive, but it doesn't mean that he's not building up a lot of roaches, so that was kind of important to check there. Actually, it's 67 drones. 
Fourth base should be... I mean, I literally just saw him look at it. There we go. Yep, should be taken. And now, perhaps... Okay. I saw, like, four overlords. That's not quite the overlord burst. Of, like, you know, if I saw eight, then I think Dark's just literally making roaches. But we had an infestation bit actually on the way. And this game might be going on a little while longer. With the first two games, expecting it to end prior to nine minutes. Maybe not this time around. I believe Dark got a pretty good overview with his overseer into the main base. Uh, I know, I'd be wrong about that. Yeah, I'd be very wrong about that. Doesn't really have any knowledge. Yeah, I suppose you can kind of figure things out. Fourth base is on the way for now. Both players are on the same time. Classic, not really making a lot of armor units. Relying a lot on his scouting to make sure that he's not being attacked and then trying to get up some pretty decent technology. Storms are on the way. About 80% done as I am speaking. Not yet buffered with many other units, and that's the concern right now because we do have Swarm Hosts on the way. So it wasn't a mass roach appeal, but you still need a lot of supplies. Swarm Hosts take up a lot, and it is going to take advantage of... I, I want to say it's going to take advantage of the shortness of the map, but again, it's more like it's going to swap back and forth very quickly if it does. So the Swarm Hosts get to be close to home while doing their attack. Okay, that is that is good for them. Hopefully you can protect them. You don't need a Nidus Worm, whatever, whatever. On the other hand, if Classic decides to let damage be done to his base by the Locusts and just moves with his army to the middle of the map, obviously the Swarm Hosts are not going to have a lot of time to actually recollect their Locusts and help out defensively. So, you know, like there's, there's you know, obviously upsides and downsides to anything you do in StarCraft. That's what makes it beautiful. Thank you, Marco Finn. 82 for the good sub. But that would be my main worry, the balance of the Swarm Host play. Already going pretty well. Kills one of the Robos. That was the second one finishing up. So in a way, I guess it's also you know, one of the better timings for Classic, I guess, to have that happen. Uh, he was not trying to get to Robotics Bay for Colossus or Disruptors. Right now, just pumping out Immortals. I actually think it was the first sign that it was Swarm Hosts. Um... And I was wondering if he was going to change his mind about that. Maybe get a robotics man out of the nose that is Locust. But nope. Getting some static defense. Lovely stasis tra strap. Like the use of that. Uh, stasis strap on the backside of this fight as well is going to help, but not enough. Swarm host also coming in, actually. And this was just barely tattered enough for both players. That I think Classic is going to be stopping his tracks, trying to get some revenge. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, the rest of the Locust just popped. Oh, no. Ugly, ugly, ugly. You know, it's like, oh, it's only like eight locusts. It's not a big deal, right? Oh, they rip and tear so bad. Oh, my God. And there just wasn't a lot of actually healthy units left over there. The Guardian Shield hadn't been there. The Archon was already dying. Not a lot of Zealots to, you know, trade out their cheap lives, I suppose. It was Immortals, Sentries, Stalkers, all things that... I mean, they don't want to go mano a mano. You want to run away from locusts at any given time, right? But Dark taking advantage of Classic's move out. Classic was trying to gain some of that map control, push back the creep, maybe try and intercept the swarm host. They'd feel a little less confident going for the harassment here. And instead, it was almost like a minimal number of Zerg units. You can only add so much on top of the swarm host, right? Actually ends up stopping Classic long enough for the swarm host to help. And I think that was the really the kicker. If those swarm hosts weren't there to help at all, it's possible that Classic finds a little bit more of a, not a snowball, but maybe just some momentum. He, he saves so many more units, he cleans up some creep, he finds a swarm host elsewhere, and he's still on four bases. So maybe it's not that bad. He can recover from the, some of these losses, but end up being a bigger loss than I think he wanted. He still is on four bases. Immortals popping out here to help out, particularly against the Roaches. No Ravagers formed there, very limited Ling supply as well. That ended up being a pretty good fight, actually, for Classic, as this four base setup really makes me believe in the potential here. But Dark is moving on from Swarm Host. Eventually, he'll have to literally give their supply away, but the supply he gave away right now is all those roaches. And even though Swarm Host that accounts of 12, still taking up a chunk, now he can replace all of those roaches with apparently pure Hydra. That is literally what he has done. If Classic took the fight against Roaches so one-sidedly that, again, he's able to just move across the map and kind of ignore the Locust here, then maybe this would be problematic. 
Lurkers wouldn't be done. Hides would be vulnerable to the storm. Maybe a little scary as far as reacting to multiple points of attacks if Zealots suddenly got into every single base. Oh, uh, that didn't happen. Classic did actually have to stay at home, respond to the swarm host, and now Dark has, well, not quite a max out army. He's getting there, and it is with Hydra Lurker. Hydra's still vulnerable to the storm, of course, but Lurker's a little less so, and they do have their range. I believe Speedboro just finished. Everything important here has their upgrades. Plus two attack as well on the Hydra's and Lurkers, plus three is on the way. No carapace necessary is what uh, apparently Dark is saying. Robo is going to go down a second one, which is actually in total the third one. Was built. Actually, a fourth one as well. So there's been four Robos in this game. So we still have double pumped immortals. That's the good news. That is the good news. The, the bad news is that while immortals are some of your better answers against lurkers, you still need one hell of a concave. You need a really ideal situation. Ideally, some storms prior to the lurkers even from burrowing. Burrowing. And then Zealots and Immortals with their shields concaving on those just burrowing lurkers. That's the ideal setup. And then 100% the Protoss army could win. Anything else, and it's kind of Protoss is screwed. You know, to kill even what is a limited number of lurkers here is really difficult currently. Looks like Classic is going to be able to actually push on through. Dark realized it as well. The Lings had disappeared, leaving nothing to body block the army. But at the same time, we got an army attack on the fourth base. We also have those swarm hosts into the natural. At the very least, keeping some of the army back at home. Something that Classic always has to worry about. But again, he also should be aware that that is supply missing from the main army. So if he ever does get one of those better engagements, if he ever does find those lurkers a little under-defended, he can actually push on through. The classic, he... Oh, God, so many soccer just went down there. Whew, finally getting those immortals on the front line. Got seven more lurkers on the way. It's going to be a total of 11. Not the most impressive, honestly. I mean, I got no carapace upgrade, which... Obviously, Storm doesn't care about carapace, and... I guess you could say it's probably not what's going to save the Lurkers from life or death if they are concaved by eight Immortals, but just keep in mind it's not there. Cluster attack's been done for Classic for a while. On his side, also no armor, though, so keep that in mind. He is working on shields, which makes a lot of sense, and is finally working on an additional Stargate, which we, we do kind of have to move on here away from the ground, especially because Dark has managed to keep all the momentum. He's been the one constantly attacking into Classic side of the map, not really letting Classic ever break that halfway point, which means all of the fear is on Classic. All of the onus is on Classic, and he's just trying to wait for that one overreach from the Zerg player, which could be here. Mothership does go down. The Lurkers are getting something killed here as, long as they die, I guess, too. But damn, that was so many Immortals. That is 11 Immortals. Yeah, maybe Lurkers aren't the play anymore, weirdly enough. Again, like, the, the Immortals still need something like Concave. They can't just be running single file into this, but that is a lot of Immortals. Gotta, gotta admit that. Oh, uh, but now we got a new problem, which is kind of just being all over the place. Swarm Host and the Natural continue to be a bother. Third base was under attack. Fourth base was simultaneously under attack, and that is the real kick in the nuts here. Oh, no, additional kick in the nuts. No Observer for a second. Ouchies. Two kicks in the nuts. That sucks. Uh, but the fourth base went down, and Classic absolutely needs his fourth base. It's one of his only really mining ones. These rest of them are all mining out. And even without the kill there, I was about to say, at 15 minutes, Classic needs to worry about a fifth. And now he is replacing his fourth. He has managed to retain a lot of the army over the last few minutes. The Immortal is still going strong with the shields back. Couple of storms in tow. But this is Classic's last army, for all intents and purposes. And it looks like Dark is very intent on not letting this turn into a one-shot, one-punch man situation. <laughs> like, this is... You're going to take too long breaking through this spore crawl colony lurker forest that you can't win. As the Locusts are still doing damage, Nidus Worm's popping up. At the very least, Dark is setting up for a possibility of a base race for him. If he can't hold back at home, which, hey, it's actually a big question. As he maneuvers over to the left to protect his fourth base, all of the Lurkers get destroyed. They killed the frontline army, however. Some Archons, some High Templars, some Zealots. Now it's really just the Immortals and one lone Observer. Very injured, just kidding, it's dead. Oracle's Revelation still exists, so maybe Lurkers still are not the play here. 
But we always know the Swarmos can come back as well. That third base was killed for Classic. His fourth base finally finished. Also going to be killed. In fact, it is the last army. And Lings and Locusts are actually very effective against it. A couple of Immortals going down. The recall does save nine. Uh, I think they saved like six. And then there's more reinforcements. But uh, only Immortal will not win the game. Now, Immortal Archon... No, I'm actually not sure that would either, in fact. Uh, the problem at that point would be dealing with literally just Mass Hydra. Because the Archons, you know, they get the little T-Rex arms. The Immortals don't have any bonus versus them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if he had not lost that fourth base at any point. At any point, it was just you know, continuously mining. Then it, eh, This actually could be very different. But having lost the third and the fourth twice. Classic needs a few more buffer units here. A couple of Archons would have done nicely. He has to storm his own army, which obviously gets a little awkward. Popping Immortal Shields, injuring Zealots, injuring High Templars. I think some of them were Focus Fire by the Locust as well. Dark did lose his own third and fourth. I should mention that, but as... A couple things, right? First of all, Hatchery is a little bit cheaper, even though you've sacrificed a drone. Second of all, Swarm Hosts don't need money. They need time. And uh, third and most important of all, he actually had base number five finished at some point. So he has had at least one base healthily mining compared to Classics to very unhealthy, just getting one unhealthy mining base. Main base is entirely gone. The Locust can always help out. Now, when the Locusts are gone, maybe Classic's army can do something, but you know what else? Whenever the Immortal Shields are gone, they're, they're almost nothing. Almost nothing. They're still something. But the Immortal Shield really is what makes these battles look one-sided one way or the other. The Shield is up, the Lurkers die. The Shield is down, the Lurkers win. Classic did manage to punch a hole once again through the third base, get another cancel, I believe. Maybe that was a kill. Four bases have been killed in this game. I'm gonna start just running around, killing some of these accessory bases that Dark cannot be allowed to get away with. So this is obviously this is not just desperation. He cannot break this particular angle. Okay, but as as sad as that is, killing these other bases is definitely something useful. Except he hasn't found the one that's actually mining. His own fourth base having been rebuilt for the third time. He's also gonna die. And finally, we have the Immortals find the hatchery, but Dark with his big brain had already placed a Nidus Worm down there in case he wanted to either evacuate or reinforce. In this case, obviously evacuating. Now he evacuates a bunch of drones, so he still has 57, but he only has like four mineral patches to mine from. So long distance mining all the way over to your other fourth base because the third is also mined out is less than ideal. But it's still better than Classic's absolutely zero mining of minerals. You know? Something is better than nothing. Dark Supply certainly looks like he's uh, in an overwhelmingly good position, but that's not exactly true. It really is being, uh, the supply is being bolstered by the Swarm Host, which half the time they aren't active in the battle. This one's going to be a pretty much wasted locust way, for instance. But the issue is that, you know, this army isn't particularly fast. And even if it was a bit faster, like it was Blink Stalkers, it's still not really believe in their ability to play the runaround game long enough. Well, it, it's more of a question of the Stalkers playing the runaround game fast enough, actually. If these were all Stalkers, and they were all trying to circumvent the Lurkers, and circumvent the Swarm Hosts, and run around and kill a bunch of things, they'd have to do so very quickly. Because we're just getting more and more Lurkers added on. Uh, I fear it's already too late. 14 Lurkers is a good amount. Putting all the Spore Crawlers over here to help versus the Oracles and the Observers. So we got some Vipers too, which guarantees all detection is going to die, actually. That is a guarantee. Any Observer or Oracle that gets close enough to hate the lurker. Oh my god, all the high templars just died. Oh, ugly. Uh, it's gonna get abducted. And that is uh, certainly an overwhelming army at this point. Yep, yep, yep. No contest. Classic! Oh, kind of letting this one go. Excellent first game. Second game was certainly in his favor. 
Third game was just chaotic all around, but uh, kind of let the semifinal go a little bit, which means that Dark versus Clem, is what we're going to be casting tomorrow. So tune in for that, guys. Thanks for watching.